So today's cardinal lesson, we're talking about the two different paths that you can go down to receive your Medicare. And frankly, you, you might not even be aware that there's two paths and you're just on one of them if you're already on Medicare and you didn't even know that there was this other thing and you made a decision for there. So we're gonna outline this today and it's, it's clearly, you can only go down one of these paths now, once you go down that, there's ways you can switch to the other path, but this is a binary decision. You're either here or you're here. So, and that's original Medicare, which is just your red, white, and blue card, part A, part B from the government directly, or a Medicare Advantage plan. And those are two different things. And that's what we're going to talk about today in this video. So, you notice we have a line right down the middle of the board, and you're either going to be on this side or you're going to be on this side. You can't be on both. And I'm going to talk a little bit about original Medicare is not okay all by itself. So in other words, if you sign up with the government, you get part A and you get part B, you pay a premium <clears throat> for part B to the government, you know, it comes out of your social security check. If you're getting one, if you're not, you got to pay it in there. And it's about 175 bucks a month for most people on Medicare, if you have a high income in retirement, you pay much more than 175 bucks a month. It's called IRMA, but that's original Medicare. That's what it is. And you, your claims are filed and paid directly from the government. And it's not okay by itself. In other words, the deductibles and the co-payments are large enough that most people that have original Medicare, they purchase what the government calls a Medigap plan or a Medicare supplement. And so you have, end up having two policies. You have original Medicare, and then you have this supplement or Medigap to fill in those gaps. And when you put the two of them together, it's, it's very good. And that's the one route. The other route is you still have to be on original Medicare and you got to pay the Part B premium and all that kind of stuff but then you outsource or you elect, it's your election, to receive your Medicare from a private insurance company. And that would be uh, like Humana, United Healthcare, Cigna, Aetna, which is now CVS. I mean, one of these private insurance companies that works in the Medicare Advantage business, they're gonna pay your benefits. So you're not gonna get your money straight from the government the government is going to pay them and then they are going to provide Medicare benefits. And there's pluses and minuses to each way of doing things. And that's what the topic of this video is. So I want to bring Tom on and I want Tom to talk about why are we doing this video today? Why is this important enough to talk about? Yeah, and we're doing this video because <clears throat> Medicare is confusing. It's confusing to know what to do. It's confusing to know which path to go. Most people who are already on Medicare, and this might be you, don't even know there was two paths. You're on one and you didn't know about the other, or you maybe knew a little bit about the other, you're mixing them up. And so really just want to peel this back, simplify it, talk about the different routes you can go, why you might go one route over another, what are the pros, what are the cons, and just give you some clarity around this. Because if you pick up that Medicare and you book, which is a, it's a pretty big, thick book that they send you, and you try to figure out how all this works, you're going to walk away more confused than you started. And so we just want to give you some, some guidance, some simplify this for you, give you an idea of, of how this works. And so let me bring up the show notes. <clears throat> we have these at the link below our video. They're also on our website. Again, we have the board as always. And then we have sort of the more details, more explanation of these pros and cons we've listed on the board. So if you, if you want more details, go print this out, go pull it up online. You can read it in, in more context around the pros and cons of, of, of both directions. But I'll turn it back to Hans. Um, we'll go through each side of the board, talks about the pros, the cons, things you need to consider to try to figure out how best to, what best decision to make for you once you get to Medicare or if you're already on Medicare. Yeah, I mean, most, most of the time when people buy this stuff, they get in touch with somebody like Tom and me who sell Medicare supplement insurance or who sell Medicare Advantage and 
they're not shown both paths. I mean, they're just shown the path that that person was selling. And so we've run into a lot of people that just got signed up for a Medicare Advantage. They thought that was the only thing there. So part of this problem is not on all in you, the consumer. It's how this stuff is marketed by the companies that are just trying to sell their path. So we're going to give you a good set of framework to make a decision. And the other reason we're doing this video is we want you to call us, call our business, and we'll help you through this and we'll help you make a selection and we'd like you to buy it from us. So I want to go over the original Medicare plus Medigap uh, side, okay? And then that also includes a Part D drug plan. So you've got to buy that separately. So what are the pluses of going this way? This is probably, I'm going to circle this one because the flexibility in providers, this is the reason that most people want to go this route or not most people, but a lot of people want to go this route. This is the biggest reason is any doctor in the U.S. that accepts Medicare, which is most of them, that you can go to them and you don't need a referral. You don't need to show them your card and see if they accept it. If they take Medicare, you can go there. And you say, well, that's not a big deal because most of my doctors accept these Medicare Advantage plans. Well, it becomes a big deal when something gets seriously ill, when you're seriously ill, and now you want to go see a specialist, you want to go to a research hospital, you want to get referred over to uh, somebody that, uh, some doctor, some clinic that specializes in what you need, like cancer, that kind of thing. You don't have to mess with a network on this side. As long as they take Medicare, you can go there. So that's, that's the biggie. Um, you have a lower out-of-pocket cost on this side when you combine the original Medicare plus the Medigap plan. So that's a plus, is you're going to have original Medicare with big gaps and then you're going to have this supplement policy that pays the difference or fills those gaps, you're going to have less out of pocket. You're going to have predictability of cost uh, with those two. And what predictability of cost is mainly the premium that you're going to be paying for the Medigap plan. And you're going to have very comprehensive coverage. So, um, I mean, just that, that says enough. Um, in terms of the higher limits. Now, the cons of being on this side, what are the negatives? You're going to have higher monthly premiums. Some of these come at zero premium. So how do you compete with that? And so you're, you're, it's a negative that you're going to have a monthly premium, maybe like 150 bucks a month for this supplement, 125 a month, maybe as high as 200 a month if you're in uh, Florida, if you're in New York, it might be 300 bucks a month, but you know, it's a choice that you make and that would be considered one of the negatives. Um, you have three separate plans. So you've got original Medicare from the government. You got this Medigap policy that those two fit together. And then you also have a part D drug plan, um, which you have to purchase separately. So you got three things going on and three places you got to pay premium that can get a little confusing. Um, and there are no extra benefits on this side, meaning that it, you, know, you don't have any dental, you don't have any vision, and you don't have any hearing. But I, I want you to know that you could purchase a separate policy for those that might actually give you better benefits than what you're going to get as the tag along over here. But so we got four pros or positives with a highlight on the flexibility to go to any doctor that you choose. Um, and four negatives over on this side. Now I want to bring Tom on and I want Tom to talk a little bit about the Medicare Advantage. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think it's important to understand and Hans had mentioned this earlier, this is an either or decision, right? You're either with original Medicare and a Medicare supplement or you've chosen to go with a Medicare Advantage plan. Technically, when you sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan, they disenroll you from original Medicare, right? The original Medicare is not providing any benefits for you. You still have to make the Part B payment, the premium for Part B of Medicare. You still have to make that payment. What Medicare does on the back end is they just sort of re-divert that money plus a lot of extra money 
to these private companies to take you sort of over the responsibility of healthcare. So I think it's important to understand that difference. But now let's get down to like, why would you choose a Medicare Advantage plan? So a big pro is the cost, right? It's a much lower monthly premium. Like Hans had mentioned, there's some of these Advantage plans that have a zero zero dollar premium. These are specific to county within the states that you live in. And so not every plan is going to be the same across the board. And so you need to look specifically where you live. But a lot of areas have zero dollar plans, which is really nice, right? I mean, you're not having to pay anything out. A lot of the Advantage plans have some additional benefits, right? They have vision included, maybe some hearing, maybe some dental, um, some different sort of benefits here and there. Um, <clears throat> this can be an, a nice benefit there if you're going to go this route. I do caution you a little bit is, is that we sort of advise against making the decision solely based off those extra benefits because the healthcare needs to be for the healthcare piece. But if you're going to go the Adva Medicare Advantage plan route anyways, having these extra benefits is, is really nice. Um, another real benefit is the integrated coverage, right? It's, it's, it's simple. You have one card. It could have, it includes the drug coverage. It includes your medical costs. You don't have to keep up with anything else. You just throw the one card when you go to your providers, which is, is really nice. And then within the Medicare Advantage plans, there is an annual out-of-pocket maximum. And so when we have someone who's on original Medicare, maybe they haven't signed up for a Medigap plan, and they say, well, why I have original Medicare. Why do I need a supplement or an Advantage plan, excuse me? Uh, original Medicare by itself does not have a maximum out of pocket, right? The the liability is technically unlimited. Is you could have bills that never end. Uh, a Medicare Advantage plan caps your costs in any given year, so there is a maximum that you would have to pay in that given year that really prevents from these catastrophic events, really putting up bills, you know, extremely high. So those are a lot of the reasons why you might choose a Medicare Advantage plan. Some of the cons. A big one, and this is sort of it goes against the Medigap plan, are network restrictions. A lot of these plans, or all these plans, do have networks. Um, if you have an HMO, you have to stay within that network. You can't go out of network. If you choose a PPO, you can go out of network, but the, the out-of-pocket costs are higher. So really, you would like to stay within network. So network restrictions is a big downside. Um, higher out-of-pocket costs, and this is really if you were to get sick, right? I mean, one of the nice things about the supplement or the Medigap plans is you have a higher monthly premium, but it's a known sort of cost, right? You're not going to have more expenses as you use this typically. On the Medicare Advantage side, you have a much lower monthly cost, but as you need it, as you get sick and are having to use it, those bills can start adding up. Now, again, it's capped at that maximum, so there is a limit to it, but you could have to pay more out of pocket if you were to get sick in a given year. Um, another difference is plan variability year to year. And so one of the things with the medic gap plans, those are standardized by the federal government. A G plan is a G plan is a G plan. They cannot change those benefits from year to year. We know what that is. The Medicare Advantage plans, those can change and they do change from year to year, right? The maximum out of pockets might change. The co-pays might change. The networks might change. So those plans, you really need to stay on top of those changes when they happen on a year-to-year -year basis, because the other thing is you are restricted to only signing up for those plans during the fall of each year. October 15th to December 7th is when you can switch the Advantage plans. And so if you get in a plan, you didn't pay attention to the changes that were happening, you get into the next year and all of a sudden these plans aren't working, um, it could be a problem. Now, there's some other windows you can disenroll. I don't want to get too far in those weeds. Um, but call us if you have some questions around that. Um, some other things is there's prior authorization potentially. So if you need to go see a specialist, you might have to get that approved by the plan first. You might have to see your primary doctor first to then get referred to a specialist. So there's some restrictions there potentially that the Medigap plans don't have. And then geographic areas. So I mean, like, so <clears throat> if you've watched our channel, I've talked about sort of my health issues in the past. When I got sick, I had to go up to the Mayo Clinic up in Minnesota, right? And, and, and our plan through Cardinal, I was able to go through there and make sure they were in network. It all worked out. With the Medicare Advantage plans, the, your coverage area can be restricted to the where you live. And you might not be able to go see that specialist that might live in a different state or something like that. So there can be restrictions that sort of tied in with the networks there. And so there's some reasons that people might like the Advantage plans. So your cost is lower. Um, you have some of these extra benefits. But again, you have some negatives too. So 
neither one is necessarily better than the other. It needs to be specific to you of which makes the most sense for you. Really what we want to do is show you both sides of it. Talk about where why you might want to do one versus the other. So when you're making a decision, you at least have the whole picture, right? You're not just sort of pigeonholed into one side and not even know about the other side. So what we have circled here down on the bottom on each side is really your reasons you would want to go one direction or the other. And as I had highlighted earlier, this side is staying on original Medicare and purchasing a separate Medigap policy and a separate Part D plan it is really, that's going to give you a choice in going to the doctor and who you go to and the process of getting there and how they're paying the bill for it. You don't have to mess around with networks. If you travel a lot, these tend to work better, even within the United States or outside the U.S. And then the flexibility that you have with this. Now, over on this side, this is people are generally going to go here for the lower premiums. I mean, that's the that's the main reason is you're going to go for that zero premium, um, which which is available with a lot of plans. The extra benefits is you're going to get on most of these plans, some dentals, some vision, even some of them have hearing plans. Um, so that's a plus. And then, you know, the network, we're putting that down as a reason is, is it means that you're okay with the network. A lot of people have been on a network plan with their group insurance and they're just fine with it. And when they translate onto Medicare, that's just not as a big of a deal for them. So within the context of comprehensive financial planning is we review people's Medicare and that's pretty much of the seven worries, the only one that we talked about today. So I want to bring Tom back on. I'm Hans Scheil. And I'm Tom Griffith. And we thank you very much for listening. Thank you.